So with the Phantom Liberty DLC for Cyberpunk 2077, they introduced many new iconics, legendary weapons, cyberware to the game. This video guys will cover it all. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out. And if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. So this ultimate guide has taken me an absolute lifetime to put together. If you do appreciate that, hitting that thumbs up button really does help me and the channel out. Now everything guys will be time stamped down below. If there's something you are missing, check the video description. Also guys, this video will contain spoilers, so be warned. Okay, so let's get into it. And firstly people, the Dugtown Black Market Vendor. What does he actually sell? Well, he sells iconics like the Nihan, the Iretta, and a few others that you could have missed from your original playthrough. In regards to the Phantom Liberty iconic weapons, he does indeed sell some of the missable ones, but there's a fair few he definitely does not sell. If you've missed one during your playthrough, come here if he hasn't got it, skip time by 24 hours, and his stock should change. Hopefully, and luck to you, he will have that weapon you missed. He also has a few new weapons you won't find anywhere else. Weapons like I believe the Order, the Warden and the HA4 Grit. He also does sell sometimes the Militech Tycon but it's rare at least for me. Now the other weapon vendor right by the black market vendor Sophia, she sells a few new weapons too. The new metal power revolver is here. You can also purchase the blueprint too. And what I will say is guys, don't waste your eddies here. Later on in the video, I'll show you where you can find this blueprint, this crafting spec out in the open. She does have the Militech Tycon quite often here too though, if you're looking for that. Now if the Militech Tycon is your thing, you can purchase the crafting spec for it from Leon located right here. Okay, so next up guys, we'll check out the airdrop iconic loot. Now, as far as I'm aware, there are four iconic weapons that can drop from these airdrops, but they are not guaranteed. So you will have to keep looting them to try recover all four. Now these airdrops, I do not believe are completely random. They do drop in certain areas. Now these airdrops are normally occupied by enemies, some of which are ready and waiting for you, some of which will come in small waves, but you will have to take them out nonetheless to open that loot securely. Keep in mind, some of these airdrops will be locked behind the hacking protocol. Now the weapons that are exclusive to these airdrops are the Alabe, the Tagen, the Laker, and I believe the Borzea. Now this one I legit couldn't even find an image on, but it is supposed to be in the files to drop from airdrops so if you've seen it or know somebody who has let us know down below okay so there are plenty of new cyberware but for the most part besides the end game mission rewards most of the new cyberware is brought from reproducts around dogtown if you're lucky you can get some to drop from enemies now i don't think this is very often but hey i have heard it does happen now i don't believe there is cyberware exclusive to certain vendors so if you get to a Ripper Dock within Dogtown and said Cyberware isn't there, skip time by 24 hours and hopefully it should appear for you. I went to Costin located right here on the map and he had all the new iconics I knew of. Now I can't guarantee these are not locked behind a certain level. For other stuff this is definitely the case and normally it's around a level 40 before they start to appear. Now these new Cyberware are... Now in regards to the circulatory system, we have the Electromag Recycler and the Isometric Stabilizer. In regards to face cyberware, we have the Kuroshi Cockatrice Optics. The new frontal cortexes, we have the Cox2 Cybersomatic Optimizer and we have the RAM Reallocator. In regards to new hand cyberware, we have their Immovable Force. 
In regards to the new integumentary systems, we have the chipping and we have the peripheral inverse. In regards to new legs, you have the Leroy ligament system. New nervous systems, you have the Revulsa, we have the Adrenal Trigger, and a Deep Field Visual Interface. Okay, so new operating systems in regards to what you can buy, we have the Chrome Compressor. And lastly, on the skeletons, we have the Rara Avis. Now, there is cyberware that you get as you play the game, but it's worth a mention just in case people are searching for it. It's called the Behavioral Implant Synced Faceplate. The mission that you get this from is called I've Seen That Face Before. This cyberware is given to you as part of this mission. There isn't any getting around it, but it's definitely unique in what it does, and it really helps out when trying to avoid police and enemy detection when they are on your butt. There's also guys new MaxTac Mantis Blades. So how do you get these? Well firstly there's two ways. The first way I will explain as it's part of the base game mission but the second is tied to an end game mission and I will talk about that later on in the video. But you can check out the timestamps in the video description. So the first way, do you guys remember the Bullets mission, a part of the base game where you meet Melissa Rory, the woman from the original teasers for Cyberpunk in 2013? But if you didn't do this mission, you can actually retrieve the Mantis Blades from her. So go back and do it. To do this guys, come here on the map. You want to come into this upper class clothing shop. In here guys, speak to the vendor. Select any choice of dialogue, it does not matter. Once you've done this guys, leave the shop and run quite far away, probably like half a kilometre away, and then maybe skip time. Upon you doing this now, he should have a mission for you, so check your map. If he hasn't, you haven't ran far enough away. So once you do get the mission, go back to him. Upon you going back to him guys and clearing out his dialogue, you will notice a cyber psycho will attack the store. Now once you take this cyber psycho out, MaxTac will arrive and the leader of the group is Melissa Rory. Now here is where it gets pretty hard, you have to take her down, so pull out your weapon and attack. Now I won't lie, this is one hard fight due to the instant 5 stars and the other MaxTac guards right here. But once you get this done guys, loot her body and you'll get the MaxTac mantis blades now you can get the epic variant from her but you want the legendary variant it doesn't matter though as you can upgrade them so don't waste your time trying to reload the save if you found that fight hard for you so we will start with weapons you can just run and grab as they are found laying around the map okay so we will start with the umbra x mod 2. now this one i truly believe is tied to a story mission early on or is bugged I say this because I have saved from almost the very start to the very last. I've loaded them all up and come to this spot. I've done every gig, every mission, completed the game and still the path isn't clear for me to get this weapon. Now I have come here and the path was clear but in order to do this guys I started the DLC again on another high level character I had. I did the first missions of Dog Eat Dog, Hole in the Sky, Spider and the Fly, I just started the Lucretta, My Reflection. I hadn't progressed this mission yet. I came to this point on the map where this weapon is located, but it was again blocked off. I went and did one gig for Mr. Hands, called the prototype in the scrapper. I came back after doing this guys, and his path was clear. The only other thing I did on this character was clear an airdrop just left of this area. I legit did nothing else, yet the path was clear and I could just come in here and grab this iconic. Now I've done all of that and more on my main character, yet this path's blocked, so I truly think it's either bugged or it's tied to an early mission which somehow blocks off this path. I mean, I don't think it's about the time of day, as I've tried on other saves to come back here at this time it was open for me, but it's still blocked off on them. So yes, this one's probably bugged for now okay so next up we have the poshar x mod 2 now with this one it is a little weird this weapon for a lot of people who have checked is locked behind a door it was for me on countless attempts of trying to get it but guys i think i have figured this out it is just maybe a little buggy 
So from this point on the map guys, you need to scale up to this point here as I do on screen now. So when you get here guys, you will see speakers. Now I do believe depending on the time of day you come here, the room in which this weapon is being held will be open. As this weapon is locked behind a door, but this door sometimes opens and there's a party going down here. So I do believe you have to come up here early hours. Now when I come up here, as you're seeing on screen now, there's speakers playing music and this never happened to me before. And I'm just, I think I'm about almost 5 a.m. here. So what I did was I checked the door but it was locked. Here I skipped time around 23 hours to that 3 a.m. mark. I had another look at the door, it was still locked. So I skipped time by one more hour, just before 4 a.m. I then took a back route around the building and it triggered something which allowed the door to open to me. Again, I do think this is bugged, but at the same time it is a party they are having. So I feel it has to be early hours of the morning before this door will open. So come here guys, Test this and let me know your results. Okay, so next up guys, we have the baseball bat X Mod 2. This one is as easy as coming to where I do on the map guys, following the path I take and just picking this thing up. Also, there's a little hidden den you may want to check out right nearby after grabbing this iconic. Next up we have the Kyubi X Mod 2 Assault Rifle. So to get this weapon guys, it's really simple. As long as you can swim, you can come and grab this. So come to this point on the map people and then just jump into this, well, pool of water and swim down. Now my game was going all kinds of crazy when swimming. The screen was glitching out. I don't even know what's going down. But it is located at the bottom of this water uh, tied to some poor fella. But yes guys, simple as that. Just come down here, grab this thing and the weapon is yours.
Next up guys, we have the Kappa X Mod 2. Now to get this weapon guys, you need 10 points spent into your body attribute. Once you have this, go on to this point on the map guys, move this panel out of the way and grab this weapon. Okay, so next up guys, we have the Metal Power Revolver Crafting Spec. Now to get this guys, come to this point on the map, follow the path I take, pretty simple, and go get this thing. Next up we have the Cutomatic X Mod 2. So this iconic chain sword is just an advanced version of a previous weapon we have seen which allows you to apply more mods to it. So to get this thing guys it's quite simple. Come to this point on the map and grab it. Next up guys we have the guillotine X mod 2. So to get this weapon it requires you to have a level 20 stat in that body attribute. But guys for now this probably will be patched there is a workaround. If you go to the right hand side and crack the glass jump up on the barrels. If you force yourself forward and look down at the weapon you can glitch it and pick the weapon up as you'll see me do on screen now. So use this while you can if you do not have the required stats. So next up guys we have weapons tied to increased criminal activity areas where you come here guys take out a gang normally the gang leader will lead you to the iconic weapon 
And first up here, we have the amazing Sparky sniper rifle. So the Sparky was added with the Phantom Liberty DLC, and well, we will call it the electric sniper. This thing's amazing. Modded by scarves, rounds fired from this weapon emit electric bolts on each headshot. I mean, why not? Okay, so to get this thing, guys, it's quite straightforward. Come to where I am on a map, guys, and head over to this criminal, well, increased criminal activity zone. It is in Terra Cognita. Once here, guys, you'll be welcomed by quite a few enemies, including a mini boss, Arasaka Drone, who can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Now, you do want to take him out. Once you do, guys, travel up the escalators, take out any remaining enemies up here, and then, guys, within this room, lays this new iconic sniper. So grab it, guys. It really is that simple. So this is how you get the new iconic sniper rifle, the Sparky. Next up we have the Agua. So this axe is pretty cool. It's Tomahawk, whatever it is. It's definitely one you don't want to miss. So the iconic offers. So this one will have them shaking in their boots it states. Crit hits with throws emit a shockwave that can damage multiple enemies. So if those mole foes are all grouped up, you hit one square in the cheekbone. I mean, this is doing some serious damage to all said enemies in vicinity. I mean, I absolutely love using this thing. So to get it, guys, it's quite simple. You want to come to this point on the map. Now, when you get here, guys, I actually went all the way around here. But I'm pretty sure there is a way in the front. Now, like I said, I went around the back and jumped through the window. But when you get here, guys, you'll notice it's an increased criminal activity zone for those voodoo boys. It's a voodoo boys hideout. Now, within here, guys, there are quite a few enemies. But this drops from the bus of this spot, an enemy called Ayo Zarin. I mean, she's a bit of a pain in the ass, but nothing too difficult. But once you do kill her, guys, she drops this iconic weapon, it's under her body, so grab it. Also guys, grab the cash access key too, and go loot the room downstairs. You never know what treasures this room will have for you. But yes guys, don't miss this amazing axe, tomahawk, whatever it is. Okay, so next up guys, we have the Reju. Now this is one of my favourite weapons in this game. A new tech SMG, which hits like a train. Shots do not require charging to penetrate obstacles and headshots have a greater crit chance. I mean, I love this weapon. So to get this guys, you want to come to this point on the map right here and sink deep into this tunnel fortress. It is an increased criminal activity area and as you progress through these tunnels, you will meet the gang leader who goes by the name of Ross Uma. Now initially guys, he runs off, uh, laying traps, this and the other, but you will meet up to him if you keep going deeper and deeper. Now when you do take this wannabe mech out, on his body will have a cash access card, so grab this thing along with whatever else you want. Now simply from this point guys, come up this ramp to find his stash right here, where you can pick up this new tech SMG. Okay, so next up guys, we have items rewarded to you from gigs. We have mainly Mr. Hands gigs, but one which is what we'll start with is from the base game. Now remember, Mr. Hands gigs will sometimes only pop up when others are completed and you are in and around the area the gig is located. So keep that in mind. Okay, so we'll start with the one that isn't a Mr. Hands gigs and that is the Lexington X Mod 2. Now this is a reward for you completing the shoot to thrill side gig this is found within your mega building apartment base so go here guys as you can see me doing on screen now and if you haven't already speak to wilson here guys you have to get first place in that shooting range competition so i suggest you make a save before doing it because i do believe you only get that one chance now i do believe you have to get a score of 40 or above to win but in winning you get the lexington x mod 2 
Also don't forget to go and buy the Dying Knight Iconic from him because from this point forward guys he becomes a weapon vendor for you. Okay, so next up guys, we have the Ambition. So this iconic weapon comes from a gig called the Prototype in the Scraper. So it's quite a straightforward gig. Now in this actual mission, you will eventually meet Hassan. Now to get this, you have to make certain choices. You first rescue him from his cell. You then go on to operate the crane so you can both escape. So as this mission ends and you're talking to Hassan, there are a few dialogue choices you need to make. The main one is to select the call in the fixer, no fast moves. You then need to tell Mr. Hands that he needs to grab the implant, but then let Hassan go. From here guys, finish the gig. Now sometime later in the story, Hands will message you saying Hassan wants to meet you. Here, go to said location and Hassan will give you this ambition weapon. Okay, so next up guys, we have two Iconics, which are kind of tied together. We have the Ogoru, I believe that's pronounced, and the Gris Gris. Now the Ogoru is tied to a gig, but it's within this gig guys, you can get a key, which is used in the main stone mission called the Damned, which you can then go ahead and get the Gris Gris. Let me explain a little further. Okay, so the two Iconic weapons are the Ogoa, I believe that's pronounced, and the Gris Gris. Now the Ogoa is tied to a gig which I believe you can do at any time and also come back to. This isn't a problem, but the Gris Gris, which is an amazing weapon, this is tied to a story mission where you enter a building. Once this mission is done, the building locks up and I've tried for about half an hour and I cannot find another way in. So at the end of the early Phantom Liberty mission of La Cretia and My Reflection, you have to wait two days for Reed's phone call. The optional mission here is to look for extra gigs in Dogtown. And it's really at this point guys you want to come and do this gig. Because it's this gig which you get the key from. And it's also because it's the next mission of where you use this key in this mission to get the Gris Gris. So yes, although you can come back to this gig at any time and grab the key and all go at Iconic. But as soon as you progress the next mission of The Damned, you cannot grab this new Iconic, the Gris Gris. So it's important to do it in this order. So as you wait for that phone call from Reed, come to this point on the map guys. Here you should get a call from Mr. Hands about this gig. So answer the call and go to this gig. The gig is called Treating Symptoms and here you have to get inside the Voodoo Boys base. Now how you do this is up to you, but the very first room you enter, right of this statue upon you coming in, there is a door you can enter. It's within this room guys you will find Slider's hideout storage key. Slider is part of the next mission after that Lucretta my reflection. This mission is called the Damned. So upon you grabbing this key you can complete this gig as I would because it's about two thirds of the way through. You come to this room where you take on a robot R Mark II. This is an awesome battle but upon you taking out this robot on his body you will find the Algoa iconic weapon. Okay so from here guys finish the gig. Once you do, you can skip time to get that phone call from Reed. So when he does, the next mission starts and it's called The Damned. Now the second part of this mission after you have met Alex at the Muff Bar is for you and Reed to go into Slider's hideout. Now in this mission guys, you have to destroy four server cores. It's in this room where you'll find Slider's hideout storage. So once you are done with the cores and the enemies, go where I go guys and enter this hideout. It's just a room but you need that key to enter it. Then here guys is the Gris Gris weapon and man oh man this thing is amazing. It's basically a charge full auto tech pistol but check this out. This weapon has been fused with Slider's Cyberdeck. Each hit has a chance to upload a random quick hack to an enemy. The stronger the quick hack, the smaller the upload chance. So yeah, pretty amazing if you ask me. It also hits very hard indeed. Okay, so next up guys, we have both the Volkanev and the Roscoe. These both come from the same gig, but let's first check out these weapons. 
So the Volker Dark is an iconic machete which grants a chance to inflict burn on an enemy, shooting an enemy affected by this burn, or will still crit damage, that's pretty cool. The more enemies affected by this burn, the more crit damage you deal but at the cost of accuracy, not bad. The Rusko is a power revolver, shooting the enemy first in the leg and then in the head will neutralize them on the spot. Grants 10 star points, not sure what that means. <laughs> Headshots against enemies lying on the ground always does crit damage, so pretty cool. Okay so the side gig where you get both of these is called waiting for a dodger. It's initially started right here on the map but you do progress elsewhere to complete it. Now this gig is one of the better ones I have done but you will eventually meet Bill and Charles. Here guys you want to help them do their thing. Now eventually you are trying to help them reach their squad car and you will come to this room right here with a couple of enemies in. Take the enemies out guys and the Volkadath is retrieved from this crate in the corner of this room. Now as you progress on a little further, you help them reach their squad car, but as soon as they're about to leave, you are halted by the arrival of Dodger. Here guys, simply take out Dodger and loot his body for that Roscoe iconic weapon. And there you have it guys, two easy to get iconic weapons. Next up guys we have the Crime Stopper Iconic Smart Pistol. This one is tied to a gig called the Heaviest of Hearts. So what this offers, rounds have a chance to disable cyber limbs, immobilizing the enemy and increasing crit chance. Crit chance is momentarily increased after reloading this weapon. Okay so this gig is located right here on the map. Here guys you will quickly meet Michael. Now Michael wants you to seek out a DA because his son is having tax issues. So in search of this DA you end up at a place called the Heavy Hearts Club, which many of you will know. So if in here guys you need to make your way upstairs to I believe the top floor where the private rooms are. The room you are looking for is number 6. So as you enter this room guys there is a suitcase right in front of you. Within this suitcase is this crime stopper iconic. So get this thing. Next up guys we have the Hercules 3AX Iconic Smart Assault Rifle and man oh man this thing is on another level. So it has a chance to severely poison enemies, poison the enemies are more susceptible to crit damage, neutralizing them causing them to explode and leaving behind a pool of acid, yep cool as. So this weapon is tied to a side gig called the Roads of Redemption. This side gig consists of you helping a bird called Nelly. Nelly wants to help neutralize a bomb virus, which is why we sign up to help. So as you progress on after you find that suitcase and that bomb uh, and you do what you gotta do with it, follow the path out the door to the right as I do on screen now guys to find this iconic waiting for you to grab it. To be honest, I'm pretty sure I'd already walked straight past this part earlier on during this gig. I may be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure I did. Okay so next up guys you have this amazing deserter iconic power double barreled shotgun and man oh man this thing is so powerful. Killing an enemy engulfs you in flames except when you're at low health this grants you increased movement speed and increased mitigation chance. So pretty cool and again this thing hits like a truck. So to get this thing guys you need to make the right choices within a side gig called the man who killed Jason Foreman. So this gig starts right here on the map. Now as you progress to the end of this gig you will come to this room right here. Within it where you more or less get access to this weapon you firstly have to take out Yasha Ivanov who upon doing this you can go ahead and speak to Rhonda who's back in this room. 
Now it's important that whatever you do, do not shoot and kill him. Just select any other options of dialogue. Uh, just do not put a bullet in him. So select any of the options here guys, but as soon as you get chance to put that gun to his head, not kill him, but when you get the option to, or the prompt to put the weapon to his head, do this. You will then get the option to lower your weapon, you also want to do this too. Here guys, he will give you access to his secret loot stash, which is where you want to come to after dropping off the dog tags to Brianna. So progress on guys, drop off the dog tags and you'll eventually get to Rinder's secret stash. In here guys, there's plenty of loot but make sure you grab this incredible shotgun. Okay, so next up guys, we have the Pizdet's iconic Smart SMG. So the longer this weapon is fired, the greater that crit chance. So this weapon is tied to a gig called the Spy in the Jungle. This is quite a long gig, I'm not going to lie to you guys, it took me about 20 minutes to do. So this gig starts off with you meeting Anna and Steven. Uh, you quickly then go on to search for Mark Banner. Eventually guys, you'll get to this point right here, where you will meet a mini boss called Rybakov. This slimy bastard goes invisible and shoots you from a distance, so chase his ass down and hand his ass to him. Now upon you taking him out, this iconic weapon can be found on his body. So grab it guys, and go on to finish this gig. Okay, so now we move on to weapons tied to side missions, which open up as you complete gigs and the main Phantom Liberty story. Okay, so first up for the side missions, we have the all reliable iconic power revolver and the risky iconic power pistol. So the risky when your health is low, weapon handling is improved and all hits are crits. Pretty cool. And the all reliable, swapping through this weapon greatly increases headshot damage and effective range. The further the target, the greater the crit shot chance. So not bad. Okay, so this one comes from a side mission called Shot by Both Sides. So as you progress and complete gigs and story missions, this should pop up for you. I had this pop up just after getting to the uh, main story DLC mission of Get It Together. And at the same time, I'd already completed four or five gigs before this one popped up. Gigs in Dogtown are tied to the handler of Mr. Hands. He also is the one who gives you this side mission. So here with this side mission, he basically wants you to help find Brie and help her with her investigation. So firstly, within this mission, you need to go to her apartment. Here you retrieve a key from a drawer. After this point, guys, you have to make your way into Dogtown underground to meet her or find her and meet her so eventually guys you'll get to this point here just after you clear the path for her through mine salt rooms so as she gets her work done and is just about to leave you are interrupted by somebody you not long met his name is dante here they kind of have it out and you have to pick a side here i definitely recommend you pick three side and take out dante on his body, he will have the all reliable iconic weapon. So if you take him out, you get this weapon. If you don't, you're still able to get the risk it, but you won't get the all reliable, I do not believe. So take Bree's side, take out Dante, and retrieve the all reliable iconic from his body. So after this point of you taking him down, you need to tell Bree it's safe to come out. Eventually, after a bit of dialogue, she will leave the risky iconic on the side for you to just take. And there you have it guys, two easy to obtain iconic weapons. Okay, so next up guys, you have the Cheetah iconic pistol. This one is pretty cool too. Come closer it states, the nearer the target, the greater the crit and bleeding chance. Hits through an enemy's torso also deal more damage. Pretty cool. So this one is obtained at the end of a side mission called No Easy Way Out. This triggered at random for me while I was running around doing gigs. In fact, I was actually halfway through doing my third gig of the Phantom Liberty DLC and I had a message from good old Fred whose friend Aaron needs some help. This is a mission that you do get this iconic weapon from, so as you progress this mission guys, you basically seek out a ripper duck, who is the only person Aaron will accept to help removing a chip in his head. But it isn't that straightforward, upon you getting to the duck and him getting to work, 
you are interrupted by two dudes who are seemingly not all for Alan getting his procedure done. Now in you taking out both of these enemies, more specifically Angie, she has this iconic weapon on her body so do what you gotta do guys to get this weapon. Next up guys we have the option between two iconics here, well if you're a female V anyway it seems. So the items are the baby boomer baseball bat and Lena's tank top, the latter I believe is only available if you are a female V. So you want to go ahead to this gig right here on the map, it's called Dazed and Confused. To be honest it's quite short, it took me about 10 minutes to complete. So within this gig guys you meet Shank and then a little later on you'll meet Lena. The end of this gig sees you having to pick certain choices and you want to do this right. So eventually you'll get to play the director of set where you are given three choices to tell Lena. For me the top two choices of tell him that he's your sister and convince him that he's a clone created by the FIA will give you the baby boomer baseball bat where when you finish this mission after selecting either of these two Lena will leave the club send you a message telling you she's left you a present and it's basically on the side in this place. Now the third dialogue option which is send tools letter and hear your lines this I believe if you're a female V and you pick this you will get Lena's tank top which is located downstairs within this building. I mean I reloaded my save to try this, I picked the third option, I actually went through every option, I never got this tank top but then my V is male so it wasn't here for me. So next up guys we have the Carmen Iconic, now this one's actually quite simple and actually a real cool side mission too. Now what I will say about this one is, if you progress too far, I believe past the fire starter mission, you won't be able to come back and do this mission. But that's okay because the Carmen reward will be sold through the black market vendor if this happens to you. So basically guys come to this point on the map and the mission should trigger as you progress the game's DLC story, it's called Balls to the Wall, within this mission you meet Paco. Here guys have a drink with him, listen to his stories, in fact you take part in his stories, it's pretty cool, but towards the end of the conversation you need to convince him to leave Dogtown. This is the dialogue choice you can see on screen now. What you mean bad? Peeps know you two are tight. They see Paco gone, your ass will be on the line too. Yeah, but it's Here you actually help him escape Dogtown. Once you've done this guys, you then have to wait two days for him to contact you. Here just skip time. Then guys, he will get in contact, you meet with him and he gives you the Carmen weapon. Okay, so now we're going to move on to missions tied directly to the Phantom Liberty main story. And we will start with the Hawk Power Assault Rifle Iconic. So yes, this is the president's very own weapon and man this thing is crazy. Headshots with this temporarily weaken and mark enemies. In this weakened state, enemies move slower, cannot use abilities, deal less damage and are more prone to losing their balance. Like wow. So if this sounds like your kind of thing, this is how you get it. Well guys, it is just leaning up at a wall waiting for you to pick it up, but not initially. So this is what I did uh, in regards to the choices that I made but I'm not really sure they do make a difference here. So during the La Cretia and My Reflection mission, you and President Myers find refuge in an abandoned Dogtown building. Within here you are greeted by two intruders, these I believe you can take out which I did. How the other path here goes with these two dudes I ain't sure. So from here you get that little sleep. Which is when I woke I saw this weapon just lying around, but here you cannot grab it. I then went on to pledge that oath and become an agent, I don't know if this matters either but to be honest I don't think it does. From here I was sent out to find Reed, which is what I did, when we got back here guys there was a little dialogue between the two and while from here up on you being instructed to leave this building, I was able to grab the weapon leaning up this wall, simple as that. 
If you progress past this part, yes, you can come back and this weapon should be here waiting for you. So do what you gotta do, guys, and come grab this amazing new Hawk Iconic Assault Rifle. Okay, so next up, guys, we have the Her Majesty. This Iconic Power Pistol is quite a tool too, I'm not gonna lie. While your optical camo is active, this weapon shots gain perfect accuracy and guaranteed headshot crits along with increased damage. As if that's not enough, it also comes with a unique built-in silencer. So to get this one guys, it's quite simple. In fact, you can't really miss this. This one is given to you by Alex within the Gate Together main story mission when you are underground with both Alex and Reed. So yes, get this thing. Sure is. Her Majesty has been itching to return to active duty. So next up guys, we have this incredible sniper rifle called the Resetsu. This iconic is quickly becoming my favourite weapon in this game. Charged rounds from this weapon penetrate through enemies and will also bend their trajectory to hit multiple targets. I mean, I love this thing. And while well, guys, it's quite straightforward. During the You Know My Name main story mission, you have to help Reed progress through a building while being a sniper lookout. Now I have heard that you can't get caught while doing this. Well we actually got caught towards the end of this segment but I still got this sniper. So definitely keep that in mind guys. But either or, probably make a save before you do this because if you do miss out on this, you're missing out on a great great weapon. Next up we have a piece of headgear you get from Lizzie Wizzy. So at the end of the You Know My Name mission where you have to leave the Black Sapphire, at the bar you will find Lizzie. If you speak to her she rewards you this headpiece free of charge. So yes, pretty cool, don't miss this thing. Next up we have the NDI Osprey and wow this thing is an utter beast. So this iconic power sniper rifle fires a series of explosive rounds. Headshots increase damage from hit firing. Neutralizing multiple targets increases reload speed and a chance to apply burning. So cool as. So to get this weapon guys, you get it at the start of the main story mission of Birds with Broken Wings. Where you have to go to Alex's safe house. Once you arrive here guys and you make your way down, follow from the point I go on screen now guys to come and pick up this weapon. It's waiting for you in a case. So when you get to the end of the Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty DLC, you will have choices to make. And these choices will determine the nine iconics you can get from the final missions of this game. So all of this starts on one of the game's final missions called the Fire Starter. This is where you need to choose what you want. Right here guys within this mission you can choose to side with Sunbird or choose to side with Reed. If I were you I'd make a manual save before this point just in case in the future if you want to come back and experience the other endings. Okay, so if you choose Songbird, you get the Peria, you get the Murphy's Law, the Quantum Tuna, and the Mancinella. If you do choose to side with Reed, you get the Machinella, the Wild Dog, the Erebus, the Militech Cantor Mark VI, the Bold Eagle, the Fang, the Crowbar, and the Max Tech Mantis Blades. It's important to note, if you do side with Reed, you will need a technical ability level of 20 to get the Erebus, the door for the Cantor Mark VI Cyberware requires a 15 in that intelligence to open, but guys, we have the code for it, so do not worry about that at all. The crowbar iconic does require a level 20 in that body attribute stat. Okay, so we will firstly start with Reed. So if you want Reed's iconics, you need to pick the bomb option of Help Reed Capture Songbird. This is you going with Reed. So from this point guys, as you progress this fire starter mission, you will eventually come face to face with Henson. Now if you take him out, you get all three of his iconic weapons. These are the Wild Dog, the Bald Eagle and the Fang. Three great weapons. But let's not lie to ourselves here. You chose this path for the Erebus and the Corrupted Cyberware. And I don't blame you. But yes, killing Henson here, loot his body and grab these three iconics. 
So firstly here, the Max Tech Mantis Blades. As you have just finished a five star mission taking Reed's side, the next mission will be called Black Steel in the Hour of Chaos. At the very start of this mission, you want to up to call Mr. Hands. Within this convoy, you need to get his contact to extract the information, but it costs you 15k. Pay this. You will then be directed to a netrunner called Yoko within Kabuki. Here, you need to accept her proposal. Once you start speaking to her, she will offer you a proposal, accept it. You then progress on guys to message Reed and then go ahead and meet him as you set up for this convoy attack. Now here you will firstly speak to Reed. You'll then speak to the 6th Street soldier who sets up all those traps. And from here guys, you'll then go ahead and speak to Reed and clear out all his dialogue. From this point, you'll have the option to message Mr. Hands about the coordinates. You want to take this option and do so. From here guys, you'll go to attack the convoy and take out Max Tech. And from here, Mr. Hands supposedly should text you and message you saying he's left you something in your mega building apartment. This is where it gets a little bit buggy. I myself, personally, I received no text or call initially from Mr. Hands. I then went on to finish the story with still absolutely nothing from Mr. Hands about this gift in my mega building apartment. I then noticed guys, I had a mission for Mr. Hands called Run This Town. So I went ahead and completed this Run This Town mission. Upon completing this guys, I went ahead and skipped time. I did this literally five times. I was skipping time, running about 40 meters, skipping time again, running about 40 meters, skipping time again. I did this guys and it triggered something. He called me saying that he had left me something in my mega building apartment. Hey, I'm tipping my proverbial head. The data you procured, so interesting and valuable as to be testicle ticklingly delightful. Stellar work. First, happy to oblige. Second, won't ask how you're gonna use it. As if I tell you. Yet I will betray another tidbit. I'm sending something to your mega building unit. A token of my appreciation. Till next time, V. Hold on, hands. How the f do you know where I. So I don't know if it's tied to completing the Run This Town mission or it's just buggy, but this is how it worked for me. And also, if you ignore the call, he will text you. But guys, when I got to my mega building apartment, the loot box was there, but I couldn't access it. I couldn't get these Max Tech Mantis Blades. So what I did from here is I created a manual save on the spot. I quit out my game fully from the dashboard. I loaded it back up and they were there for me to grab. So I hope this helps you out if you're experiencing the same kind of bugs I were. But there we have it guys, that's how you get the Max Tech Mantis Blades within Cyberpunk 2077. Now the next mission of Somewhat Damage is the one that gives you the crowbar, it gives you the Erebus blueprint and it also gives you that Cantor Mark 6 blueprint. Okay so, during the very start of the Somewhat Damage mission guys, you will come to this point right here. This is where you can grab that crowbar iconic. Again guys, you need a level 20 in that body attribute to get this. But hey, just go as I go, go to this gate. If you have the 20 in that body attribute, force this gate open and grab this iconic while you are here. So from this point guys, just progress this mission until your next objective is to find the data terminals of Sierra and Victor. But be careful as you've probably realised by this point, if that robot captures you, it's instant death. So a lot of stealth will be required within this section of the mission guys. So now people, you'll be able to grab the Erebus Iconic Weapon Blueprint. This requires again a technical ability level of a 20. So from this point with one of the main hallways where you can see those certain rooms, you need to come to the engineering room. Then guys will see right in front of you, the maintenance room. This is a room which beholds this Erebus blueprint. But it will be locked behind a technical ability of a level 20. If you have this, follow this quick path to the storage room where I go guys to fix the power box to open this door. Be careful when you do this, normally the robot comes up right near you, so hide if that happens.
from this point guys go back to that maintenance room open it up and grab that blueprint From this point guys we will progress on to grab the Militech Canton Mark 6 Cyberware. So as you progress this mission guys you will eventually be required to find the Neural Network Room. When you see Reed and Songbird on that couch with the labs room right in front of you, you are on the right path. From this point guys follow the path I take to the room to grab this Cyberware Blueprint. Now to open the door which beholds the Canton Blueprint. It states you need 15 in the intelligence stat, but luckily guys, I know the code, which you're seeing on screen now. It is 714212. Use this code and that door will open and you can grab this blueprint without having those 15 levels in the intelligence. So once you have it guys, there's one last thing you must pick up and it's right near the end. So after you see and learn about Songbird's past, when you kind of like pass out, after that robot grabs hold of you, you will then wake up where you passed out and the robot will be disabled. Here, grab the behavioral system component from the robot. This is required to craft one of the two blueprints you just grabbed. Once you have this guys, you can finish this mission however you want. So once the credits have run, you'll wake up in your apartment. Now here, depending on your choices, you could wake up and have a little back and forth with Johnny, but it doesn't really matter. After whatever you wake up to, if you skip time, you should receive a message from an unknown user. This will start the mission of the corrosion. So this mission sees you going back to that Ripper Dock Yoku in Kabuki. Here guys, you give her that behavioral system component, which after you wait, she hands you a shard. This shard is the core ingredient to the Erebus and the corrupted Militech Cantor Mark 6 Cyborg. But here, you can only craft one, so make the right choice. Or save the game, so you can play with both, and then make the choice. Okay, so now we reverse all the way back to that Firestarter mission. So if you choose the option of siding with Songbird, so here you would select help songbird escape, here you do exactly this. Now soon after you click this guys, Alex up above you takes out Hansen. Now I have seen people state for some, you can go back up to that room and grab Hansen's iconics. For me, I tried absolutely everything, I couldn't get back up there. So from this point guys, as you progress on, soon after you can hack the helicopter or activate the bots, you will soon come across Murphy. If Murphy is killed, he drops the Murphy's Law Iconic. So do what you gotta do guys, and don't miss this Iconic. So from here guys, you can just finish this mission. Do what you gotta do. So as you then progress on guys, skipping a few days, you should have another mission pop up of Killing Moon. This is where Songbird will contact you. Now within this mission guys, you can get the Perrier Iconic Weapon. This is Reed's pistol. But in order to do this guys, you have to help Songbird up until the very, very end. So towards the end of this mission, you need to continue on helping Songbird get to that rocket and take off. This means guys, when the time is right, you have to kill Reed. This happens at the very end, just after you pick her up off the train to carry her to that rocket. Reed will make an appearance and here guys you have to kill him by drawing your gun and shooting. Now upon you doing this you then pick Songbird back up off the floor, then place her within that rocket, tie her in, check her diagnostics, then when you head back out you can pick up Reed's weapon off the floor right in front of him. From this point guys you and Johnny watch her take off then the credits roll. Okay, so upon you siding with Songbird and sending her off into space, you now in-game want to skip time by a few days. Eventually, you will get a text message from an unknown number. 
This will trigger a short quest called From Her to Eternity. Songbird has left you one last parting gift. Here guys, you go back to that spot which reminded her of home. Here, when you scan next to this sofa, you will see the iconic cyberware, the quantum tuner, which in my opinion is pretty amazing. Very, very useful indeed. Okay, so lastly, no matter whose side you chose, when all is said and done, you should get a call from Mr. Hands. Now on my one playthrough, I hadn't done all of his gigs and other I had. Either or, I had this mission pop up. I have seen somebody state that you need to do this mission right after the fire start mission before you do the very last mission. That is completely false. This mission will pop up after those credits have rolled as it did for me. So here Mr. Hands gives you another mission. He will call you. The mission is called Run This Town. From here guys, he asks you to meet him at the Heavy Hearts Club. When you get here guys, you go through a bit of dialogue and he gives you the iconic pistol, the Mancinella. Now there are a few other weapons which you can't get from the game itself. One of these is a Twitch drop, a lot of them are Amazon Prime rewards. But you also get two weapons for owning other CD Projekt Red games like Gwent and The Witcher. So for watching your favourite streamer on Twitch stream, Cyberpunk, there's a chance you can get the Yasha. So there are quite a few weapons associated with Amazon Prime Rewards. Some of these I believe are yet to arrive, some may have passed. These weapons guys you can see on screen now. There's six I believe in total. We also have in-game rewards people if you own other games. Witcher and Gwent. If that's the case, uh, you can get the Scorch and the Gwent Blade. In order to receive these guys, you must have the Witcher 3 and Gwent the Witcher card game added to your account on GOG or link your Steam account to GOG if you own any of the games on there. And there we have it guys, a complete guide on all new iconic and legendary items in regards to weapons, cyberware within Cyberpunk 2077 Phantom Liberty. If you guys enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.